Your Majesty, on behalf of the people of Scotland, I thank you for the gift of the mace. There shall be a Scottish Parliament. Through long years, many long years in the case of many of us, those words were first a hope, then a belief, then a promise. Now they are a reality. In September 1997, the people of Scotland voted by almost three to one for the creation of the first Scottish Parliament in 300 years. Once that decision had been taken, the search was on for a site for a new building that would become the permanent home of the new Parliament. After consideration of the alternatives, the site chosen was here, at the foot of the Royal Mile close to the Palace of Holyrood and its ancient abbey. Following an open competition, the Spanish architect, Enrique Morales, was chosen as the building's designer and it was his vision that shaped its character. A primary concern of Morales was that the building should, in the designer's words, sit in the land meaning that it should blend naturally with the surrounding landscape and the nearby historic buildings along the Royal Mile. Scottish materials were to be used, wood, stone, glass, and Scottish emblems would be featured, particularly the saltire or cross of St Andrew, which was to be incorporated in abstract form into decorative aspects of the building. Morales had been attracted by the shape of upturned boats seen along the Fife coastline and based some of the roof designs on this concept. In October 1998, clearing of the site began. During this stage of the work, care was taken to record and preserve archaeological finds uncovered by the excavations particularly in the vicinity of Queensbury House. While the work progressed, it was hidden from public view by this large green fence which surrounded the site. Rather than allow the fence to be defaced by graffiti, a Holdings Artwork initiative was launched in 1999, titled The Face of Your Future Parliament using the artwork of children from schools throughout Scotland in order to encourage child art. Outside the fence, work was undertaken to widen and strengthen the roads, including the construction of two new roundabouts here in Holyrood Park. Meanwhile, behind the hoardings, work on the site slowly progressed and the various buildings making up the Parliament gradually rose from the ground. Unfortunately, so did the cost, and the whole project was mired in controversy for several years. Sadly, in the midst of this controversy, the architect, Enrique Morales, died suddenly in July 2000. Sadness turned to tragedy when October of the same year saw the unexpected death of Donald Dewar, then the first minister of the new parliament. Bereft of its architect and chief political protagonist, the project did not have its troubles to seek. But despite these setbacks, work continued and Morales' vision gradually began to take shape. Features that were first seen as details in the original model of the building were becoming recognisable structures amid the bustling activity on the construction site. During the year 2004, work on the building was at last completed. In March of that year, the last of the tower cranes left the site and by August, staff were moving in. 
October 2004, saw the official opening of the new Holyrood building. Because of the controversy that still surrounded the project, this was planned to be a modest celebration. But the crowd still turned out and there was a genuine sense of occasion. Queen duly arrived and formally opened the new Parliament building. Now the finished structure could be seen as Enric Morales had envisioned it. Looking down at the building, your eye is caught by what look like concrete branches covered in grass, which flow out from the leaf-shaped buildings, connecting them with the landscape of Holyrood Park. At the front of the building is an open and accessible public space with walkways and cycle routes and an area for public gatherings. Much of the building is clad in Kemney granite which comes from Aberdeenshire and many of the windows are fronted by a wooden lattice made from oak timbers. Once inside, you enter a corridor with a ceiling decorated with the abstract form of the saltire. Wood and glass pervade the interior of the building, giving it warmth and light. Offices for members of the Parliament also rely on wood and glass for their warmth and light. In these offices are stainless steel windows with window seats described by Enric Morales as a contemplative space for the occupants. The principal work of the Parliament takes place in the committee rooms and the debating chamber. There are six committee rooms, each providing space for between 20 and 50 witnesses and other members of the public. The debating chamber is approached via a glazed walkway, at the end of which is a stone lintel from the original pre-Union Parliament House building. This chamber is the hub of the Parliament. It is a steel frame building clad in concrete panels. The unique roof structure consists of laminated oak beams supported at ceiling level by a system of stainless steel joints. The absence of supporting columns ensures clear sight lines throughout the chamber. The floor of the chamber contains seating arranged in a semicircular layout. Meetings of the Parliament take place in the debating chamber on Wednesday afternoons and all day on Thursday. And there is a public gallery where, on most days, you can just go in 
to watch and listen. The new Parliament building now stands here as a symbol of the latest stage in the continuing development of democracy in Scotland. Morales designed a building that was intended to blend in with the landscape surrounding it. And as you view the completed work from up here in Salisbury Crags, it certainly looks as if he has succeeded. Time alone will tell if the building and the parliament at Houses will also blend naturally into the political life of the Scottish nation.